A major development has just happened with the Microsoft Activision Blizzard acquisition, where it looks like now things are going to be delayed until October as Microsoft and Activision Blizzard have agreed to an extension. Though this might seem more of a padding to the deadline rather than the deadline itself. The head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, tweeted this out saying Microsoft and Activision Blizzard have extended their merger agreement deadline to October 18th. We're optimistic about getting this done and excited about bringing more games to more players everywhere. After Xbox's win versus the FTC when it comes to this merger, it's becoming more of a reality that this deal is going to happen because that was the biggest hurdle that Xbox and Activision Blizzard had to get over when it comes to this merger. Yes, other countries have approved this merger throughout the world and the only bump in the road really has been the CMA over in the UK over cloud gaming. Though with this big win over the FTC, it's Sounds like the CMA might be trying to change their mind a little bit. And this sentiment was echoed by the CCO over at Activision, saying the recent decision in the US and approvals in 40 countries all validate that the deal is good for competition, players, and the future of gaming. Given the global regulatory approvals and the company's confidence that CMA now recognizes there are remedies available to meet their concerns in the UK, basically saying that all all these other countries throughout the world with major markets all approved this deal except for the UK over cloud gaming, which is actually Xbox's least used service. According to Sarah Bond, one of the leads over there at Xbox stated that most people use xCloud as a way to just play their game while their game downloads, which kind of makes sense as cloud gaming just really isn't quite there at the moment when it comes to technology to make it feel like you're playing your game really rather than playing your game through online. Interesting thing here is that the termination fee has actually been increased for this deal. So if Microsoft or Activision walk away from this deal at any point right now before August 29th, it'll be a $3.5 billion fine. And after the 29th of August, it jumped up to $4.5 billion just for a fee just to walk away. But that date of October 29th is very important for other reasons that we'll cover in this video. In a major turn of events when it comes to getting this deal done, Activision has agreed to potentially hold separate the company or certain assets of the company or to implement other lawful alternatives to consummate the merger. Effectively, Activision agreed to hold certain aspects of their company from this merger because of the CMA market when it comes to the UK, about cloud gaming and things like that. If they can't get everything transferred over, Activision just agreed saying, yeah, that's fine. This recent extension comes around because Microsoft had originally planned to close the Activision Blizzard deal by July 18th, but obviously things got complicated. So you're probably thinking, man, we have to wait until October for this deal to get finalized. It's gonna get finalized, just like let it happen. Like it's already been approved. Well, it sounds like it might come a little bit sooner than that. As the CMA also said last week that it will now issue a final order by August 29th. Remember that date I was telling you about? Meaning that this is more the realistic end date when it comes to the negotiations between the CMA and Xbox, Activision Blizzard to have this deal finalized. So we could see it at the end of October where we get a deal sent to Activision Blizzard and Microsoft by the CMA saying this is our rules and our terms of agreement. And if Microsoft and Activision Blizzard agreed to it, well then we're off to the races. So I'm assuming that this extension until October is more of a buffer between the end of August to when they really want to get this deal completed, as I'm sure there'll probably be some back and forth with this final order that needs to be sent by the 29th at the latest by the CMA. Seeing this end date being pushed all the way to October 18th and knowing that the CMA's final order needs to be sent by August 29th, this kind of lets me know like this deal is going to happen this year. I know that Microsoft Activision Blizzard were really hoping to get this done in July but obviously things happen this is one of the largest mergers of all time so it's going to be under a lot of scrutiny now a massive deal involving this acquisition just was announced the other day with Sony and Microsoft coming to agreement that they'll keep Call of Duty on the platform for Sony for 10 years. This is a change from the original offer where Microsoft said to Sony that they'll be willing to keep all existing Activision console titles on Sony including future versions in the Call of Duty franchise 
or any other current Activision franchise on Sony through December 31st, 2027. This is one a big thing for you PlayStation fans out there, so you'll still be able to play your Call of Duty games on PlayStation, which I think ultimately would make sense. This was even brought up within the FTC case between FTC and Microsoft saying that like it wouldn't financially make sense to keep games like Call of Duty on only Xbox and PC and just completely pushing out the PlayStation Network. Jim Ryan, who's one of the heads over at PlayStation, actually has said this about the whole thing, saying that we're pretty sure we will continue to see Call of Duty on PlayStation for many years to come. And that would absolutely line up with what Bobby Kodak from Activision said on the stand, what Phil Spencer said on the stand as well during the FTC case. Though it does seem like a lot of the Sony PlayStation exclusives that we see when it comes to Call of Duty is going to be ending rather soon. In fact, even this year, according to recent reports saying that the Sony's Call of Duty deal ends in 2024, but only includes up to Call of Duty in 2023. Effectively saying that the deal says 2024, though what games are written underneath what comes with that deal, it's only written until 2023. So if this deal happens before the end of this year, we might not see any more PlayStation exclusives when it comes to Call of Duty games once we get into 2024. And an interesting side note when it comes to this Activision, Blizzard, Microsoft merger and Call of Duty, well, there's been a resurgence when it comes to the population of Call of Duty games, as it seems like the servers here are fixed. The same thousands of Call of Duty fans are playing classic 360 titles as thanks to this fix to the servers, saying that more than 100 thousand players are online playing the original call of duty black ops back on the 360. so players are also just playing this through backwards compatible games if they have the disc they're popping it in and playing and that just plug into the 360 anytime soon though it does seem like the issues of like hackers are still very much a thing and i've seen reports of input latency as well for this backwards compatibility and reportedly as i mean emphasis on reportedly i haven't seen confirmation on this information beyond just what is being shown to me right now but it says they confirmed it was actually Microsoft that went ahead and fixed the old Call of Duty servers. Sources close to Activision confirmed from Modern Warfare 2 Informer, who has over th nearly 300,000 followers, which is a significant follower base where you wouldn't want to share false information to. Obviously, there's always that need for internet clout and being first to be able to break some news, but it does seem like it's fishy how as soon as this deal effectively got approved by the FTC, the Call of Duty servers are now just totally Totally fine and working. With this recent server fix and the games going on sale, well, it seems like now that these old Call of Duty titles are actually the top paid games right now on Microsoft, which is kind of crazy to think about. I mean, they are basically slashed in half when it comes to price. So very rarely you do see these Call of Duty games get such a sale. So it probably has a little bit of a two factor of one servers finally working. People are excited about this news and also just that the games are on sale. So it's kind of crazy how this is happening. If at any point you found this video informative or enjoyed it, make sure to tap that like button. It is the best way to help out the video and channel within the all famous YouTube algorithm. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.